And in their study of early life, archaeologists have discovered evidences of huge prehistoric animals that lived on this earth many, many years ago. Now, these are sketches of what these uh, animals must have looked like, these amphibians, which are animals that lived in the water during a period called the Triassic Age. Yes, yes, Tippy. Were they as big as elephants? Elephants? Oh, some of them were a great deal bigger. <laughs> now, this was called a Mastodonsaurus. This was the Plateosaurus. And this was a Synignopus. <laughs> Don't worry, you won't have to remember those names for the test. Ooh, they sure look scary. Yes, but you needn't be frightened because these animals disappeared from the Earth oh, 200 million years ago. Now, I've always been fascinated by these animals. You know, some of them were bigger than buildings. But we'll go into that more tomorrow. Now, right now, what I'd like to do is to have one of you, yes, we have time, one of you read a poem. I hope you've all done your homework. What about you, Catfish? I mean, Wilbur. <laughs> Would you like to? All right. Now stand up. Come up here. Face the class. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Toads by... Uh, Wilbur, speak clearly. Toads by Wilbur Merkins. Toads are animals that live in weeds, eat a lot of bugs, they don't like seeds. <laughs> See, there's another thing I can think of around with weeds. Of course, of course. Very good. Proceed. Some people think frogs are toads, but they're not, because they're frogs. <laughs> Girls aren't very good sports. They don't like toads, because they're afraid to get warts. Oh. Yeah. 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 Just a moment. Before you go, I want to remind all of you of our outing this weekend at Strawberry Cove. Yeah. Now, all of you know Mrs. Pringle. Mrs. Pringle is president of the Calio Bay Bird Watchers Society. Now, Mrs. Pringle has asked to go with us. She wants to help us identify any birds that we might come across. All right, class dismissed. Wilbur. Mr. Mead. Yes, ma'am. I do believe that's the mating call of the rather rare Butterbill Coot. It's very similar to our dear feathered Quilltail Coot. I'm afraid I couldn't tell the difference, Miss Pringle. Well, their mating calls are very much alike. It requires a trained ear and several years of careful study to tell them apart. Yeah, well, doesn't surprise me. Sounds like an old buzzer to me. <laughs> <laughs> Young ma'am. Uh, maybe we better be on our way. Very well. Here, here, here. Get back in line. Back in line. Members of the Woodcraft Club, forward, march! Where those stones? Ah, there they are. Put that there. Ah, now we're all set for a fine, warm fire tonight. Are you going to tell us another scary story like last time? <laughs> I might manage to remember one. But right now, get ready for the hike. Everybody, everybody. First, I think we better arrange our sleeping bag. Oh. The young ladies over there with me, and the boys over here with you, Mr. Mead. Oh. I suggest you choose the highest ground to keep the dampness oh. out. Oh. There's that dear, dear bird again. Huh? Uh, would you mind, Mr. Mead? Yes. Would you mind postponing our hike for just a few minutes? Oh? That's very sweet of you. I know the children will be terribly thrilled to see a buttermilk coot. How are you going to get him here? Well, we'll just pretend I'm his mate. 
Now, where did I put that coat? There, there, you see? Hmm. That's your nickel. Don't be a buzzard. It shan't be long. It's a buzzard! <laughs> Start the hike. I told you. Young man. Just what are you doing? I betted him and Nickel be a buzzard. Your bad manners are exceeded only by your bad grammar. Yes, I'm... up Mrs. Pringle and the rest of the children. Just have to move my sleeping bag, Mr. Mead. Ants. I see. Uh, all right, Wilbur. Uh, quiet. Yes, sir. Scott, come on down. frighten the children. Why? But I saw something very strange what? down at the cove. Why? Shh, come and what? see. Why? Come and see for yourself. What'd you see? Uh, oh, shh, come on. Oh, come on. Well, where? Shh. What is Why, it? Follow me. Where? Follow me. Oh, noodle crunch. Oh, shh. Where are you going? Now it's nothing. Nothing at all. Now go on back to sleep. Back to sleep. Come on. on. Back, huh? Back to sleep. Go on. Come on, you guys. Let's just go on. Let's follow him. This is uh, going to be very hard to believe. But I just saw a huge, big sea monster. Where? Out there I don't that, see any monsters. Oh, no. I don't want to stay here. I'm scared of monsters. Really, Mr. Me? Yes, Mrs. Springle. I promise you, I, I saw it. And where is your monster now? Maybe he drowned it. Oh, not likely, Wilbur. Like that one no. Oh, Bono. Oh. Saurus, you saw? Masters and Saurus? Yeah. No, not exactly. But it was very like the Platyosaurus. Very like the Platyos. 
Oh. Enough of your foolishness. Come on, let's go back to our sleeping bags. I want to go home. Well, I'm sure Mr. Mead was just playing a joke on us, darling. This was no joke, Mrs. Pringle, I assure you. It's obvious you suffered an hallucination. Now, I don't think it's right for you to frighten the children this way. Heck, we ain't scared, are we, catfish? <clears throat> no, young man, I don't suppose you would be. Now, come on, Please. let's all go back, huh? Enough of this, enough of this. Come on, let's go. You know, I don't think she likes me. Where's the monster now, Miss Pringle? That's all right. Everything is going to be just fine. Do you think we'll you really you. did see a monster? Come on. It'll be all right. It'll be all right. Easy. Not too hard. Okay, that's good. Undo the tarp and start unloading that stuff. I'm gonna go see the boss. I always thought there was something strange about that man. If you could have seen how he frightened the children with that ridiculous story about seeing a monster. There he is now. John. Get you some coffee? Oh, yes. Thank you. Mrs. Pringle didn't waste much time, did she? <laughs> well, she's been halfway around town by now. Tongue wagon, mile a minute. Thank you. Okay, go. Cream? Uh, no. John, what do you think about what I saw? Well, I, I don't doubt that you saw something out there in the cove, but a sea monster. <laughs> you know, the mist around that cove can sometimes play strange tricks on the mind. It wasn't the mist, John. You've got to believe that there is a possibility of a logical explanation for all this. Now, reports of immense reptile-like creatures have been published in all the leading scientific journals. My feeling is that I've seen... Henry. One... Henry, now, you and I have been friends ever since I moved here to Caliube. I just... Well, I just hope you're not going to be offended by what I'm going to say. No, of course not. I'm sure that you did see something out there. But how are you going to convince anyone else? I mean, talk going around is that your story isn't very, well, rational. Mm. Henry, you should go down to the newspaper and have them print a retraction. That would put an end to all this talk that's going around. I just wouldn't be honest with myself. Whatever you think is right, Henry. Well... Good uh, afternoon, Henry. George. John? Mr. Max. I've been looking all over town for you. Me? Yes. Uh, just a coffee, please, oh, John. Oh, sure. I've heard those stories that have been circulating around town today. Oh. Uh, frankly, I didn't pay too much attention to them at first, but uh, now... Uh, oh, thank oh, you very much. <laughs> thank you. You boys, excuse me. I got some checking to do in the stock room, huh? Now, a more serious side of the situation has developed. <clears throat> I don't understand. I'm not going to beat around the bush. No, please don't. Apparently, some of those children were pretty badly frightened with your story about a sea monster. Most of the parents say the same thing. They feel... They feel that a man who is getting along in years and who suffers from these illusions might not be fit to teach their children. It wasn't an illusion, George. I'm almost certain of that. I was trying to tell John about authenticated articles which describe similar animals being sighted in various other parts of the world. 
Now, my feeling is... I can't argue that with you, Henry. But as mayor, you must understand that I have to listen to all sides. Now, Mrs. Pringle has organized a parents' committee. They're meeting in my house tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. I'd like for you to be there. And we can all discuss this situation further. Recommend. R-E-C-C-O-M-M-E-N-D. Recommend. That right, Mr. Meade? Sorry. I must have been uh, thinking something else. Would you spell it once more, please? Yes, sir. Recommend. R-E-C-C-O-M-M-E-N-D. Recommend. There's only one C. Now, you try to remember that, Scott, because it is a word that we're very likely to have on the test. Yes, sir. Now, children, I'm going to dismiss the class early today. And for your homework, I suggest that you concentrate on your term compositions. Dismiss. <laughs> Maybe if we talk to him, we can cheer him up. Yeah. Wait a minute. What do we say? Come on, we'll think of something. Yes, children? We were wondering if you were feeling sick or something. No, I, I just feel a little tired today, that's all. You're sad about what people are saying, aren't you? Yes, I think that's partly true. I even heard a few rumors about how I was supposed to be a little touched in the head. I think it's mean for people to talk like that. Yeah. How do they know there ain't a monster at the cove? Isn't, Wilbur. Not ain't. They're just shoving into confusions. I believe you, Mr. Mead. Thank you, Tippy. Scott and Catfish, they believe you too. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, let's not talk about monsters anymore. How are your compositions coming along? What subject? Did you pick, Wilma? I'm writing about Moby Dick, about this big old whale. Bet he's even being your monster, Mr. Meade. He's... <clears throat> thought we weren't going to talk about monsters anymore. Oh, yeah. Well, it sounds very interesting, and I'll be most anxious to read it. Now, why don't you children run along, because I have so many papers to go over now. Yeah, we got to go anyway. Bye, Mr. Meade. Don't worry, Mr. Meade. something to help Mr. Me. Yeah, you want to know what my father says? What? Some people want to bring in a new teacher for Midville. And fire Mr. Mead? We just can't let that happen. You really think Mr. Mead saw a monster? I don't know. But you said in I that you... just trying to make him feel better. Hey, I got an idea. Oh, oh no. no. Why don't we build a monster? What good would that do? Well, simply Mr. Mead. Yeah. But build it out of what? What about that old pipe boat Mr. Gorkins was building? Yeah, he got the dot at King's Landing when he moved. I got some old chicken wire and some boards, and I got yeah, some... Yeah, I get some paint and nails and stuff like that. That's a good idea. Still don't see how some trim gets dry. I told you, if he comes home all muddy, Mom will make me give him another bath. Then why'd you bring him? What if we were attacked by some ferocious animal or something? Bet you'd run faster than any of us. Oh, yeah? You think trap when he gets mean? I mean really mean. Only the time when those coops fell out and Mr. Barker's truck and his chickens got loose. Hey, there it is. Yeah, come on. Let's see if it works. Boy, this is gonna work great. Let's clean it up. Yeah, and get some of this old junk out of the way. Look, it's got a hole in it. Yeah, but it's just a little hole. Still leaks, don't it? We don't want a leaky monster. I can fix it. There's a cork in one of those old cans. See? There. Why don't you and Catfish start unloading the wagon? Me and Tramp will stand watch, in case anybody comes. I got a better idea. Why don't you and Catfish unload the wagon and let me and Tramp stand watch? He's my dog. 
Because that stuff's heavy and I'm a girl. That's why. Come on, Tramp. Girls sure got a maid. Yeah, but I still don't think I want to be one. Building a monster sure is hard work. Yeah. Yeah, we better get going. What's the matter, boy? God, catfish! There's a boat coming this way. Two men in it. Get down! What are we gonna do? We can't let them see our monster. Maybe we can hide him. Get down! Dumbhead, this ain't where we turn in. It's the next cove ahead. Oh, you seen what cove? You seen them all? It would be nice if you'd remember where we put the loot. Did you hear what they said? Bet you it's money. The faulty bank robbers, that's what. Wonder where they got the money hid. It's gotta be up at the old grogging shack. How do you know? Because that's near the coal, and that's where they were going. That's how come. Think we ought to tell Sheriff Wiley? I don't know. Yeah, he's still kind of mad about that time we told him we seen that flying saucer, you know, over near Hatch's cornfield. Yeah, and it was nothing but Mr. Hatch's new <laughs> chicken brooder. <laughs> come on, let's put our stuff away so we can get on home. Bet you if we had proof he'd listen to us. How are we gonna get proof? We could go to the old shack and find some. That's how. Can't. Why? Because, uh, I got a violin right lesson and I can't be late. That's why. Maybe you don't want the reward. Reward? If they're crooks, there's gotta be a reward for them. Yeah, I never thought of that. Come on, it's on the way home anyhow. Exactly the way the boss likes to see him. Yeah, it's about time he's getting here. Oh, yeah, we better go meet him. Nothing around here but mosquitoes and rats. Now put that thing away. Come on, let's go. That was close. Yeah. Boy, Scott, bet you were scared. 
No. Boy, I was. What'd you see? They got a secret trap door in there. That's probably where the money's hid. Come on. Step. The stuff is stashed away over there in the corner. There you go, boy. Okay, Harry? Yeah. I still don't see what that monster the man said he's seen has got to do with us. Well, the boss don't want no tourists and newspaper reporters snooping around the cove, especially with a new shipment coming in. Besides, the boss thinks it might have been us the old man saw and not a monster. Ain't that right, boss? Hey. Okay. We'll take you up to the point in the boat, boss. We'll hang around here and keep our eyes on things until we hear from you. Well, I can think of a lot of places I'd rather be hanging around. Sheriff Wiley, come on. Hey, dumbhead, you locked the door? saucer that landed out at Hatch's cornfield, huh? But this is different. Yeah, one of them even had a gun. You saw a gun? 
All right, exactly where is this old shack? Near Grogan's Pond. Well, the old Grogan place was sold at auction about uh, two years ago. Now, let's see here. Man who has legal title of that land is Mayor Hathaway. It also says here that land is posted. We didn't see any posts. Posted means anybody who goes on that property without permission is breaking the law. Then you can arrest him for that. Yeah. You know, if those men are out there, they are not the only ones who broke the law. But we was just investigating them. Yeah. Well, I'll talk to the mayor, and I'll drop out to the Grogan's place when I get around to it. Maybe we can go with you. Yeah, can we, Sheriff, please? Look, all I want you three to do is go home, get to bed, and stay away from posted property. Is that understood? Yes, sir. All right, Sheriff. Come on, Sheriff. Just a bunch of kids letting their imagination run away with them. Yeah, I suppose so. Still, can't do any harm to check into their story. Yes, Mrs. Pringle, I do know why you formed this committee. Henry and I have already discussed the matter. Mr. Meade, I understand you haven't retracted your story about seeing a sea monster. No, Mrs. Pringle, I have not, and I have no intention of so doing. Mayor Hathaway, all of us here are bedrock citizens. As you well know, my family goes back for seven generations. Yes, ma'am. I am very aware of that. Now, are there any other items that any of the rest of you might care to bring up? Uh, yes, George. I would like to ask a question. What if this story about a sea monster were to leak out to the newspapers upstate? I'm afraid I don't quite understand the point you're trying to make. Well, isn't it obvious? Now, if we were... We here are all very proud of our town. Its historic quaintness could be destroyed overnight if the newspapers were to play this thing up. Tourists from everywhere would come flooding in here in the hopes of seeing what is simply a figment of Mr. Meade's highly active imagination. I have tried to convince all of you that this is not a figment of my imagination. And I will risk my professional standing on that statement. Mrs. Pringle, just uh, what do you and the other members of the committee suggest I do about this situation? Speak to the school superintendent. Have Henry Meade replaced. It was closed when we left here, wasn't it? Oh, I thought it was. Maybe somebody busted in. Uh-oh. We better check before we tell the boss. You got the keys? Yeah. I, uh... I'm sorry, Henry. Perhaps I shouldn't have asked you to come here. Well, I'm glad you did. At least now I know where I stand. What can I do for you? Well, there's something I, uh... There's something I wanted to talk to you about. Come on in. Hey, right in here. Thank you. <clears throat> it's about that, uh... That property you own. The old Grogan's place. Oh, yes? Well, some kids claim they saw a couple of strangers hanging around down there. Said they hid some boxes down in the cellar underneath the old shack. Boxes? Mm -hmm. Boxes of what? Well, they weren't too clear on that point. Uh, sit down, Frank. Yeah, thank you. You know, I, I don't mind the kids going out to the old place, but their story sounds kind of far-fetched to me. Well, that's what I thought, too. You know, I've never even been in that old shack. As a matter of fact, I've been thinking about tearing it down. It's quite an eyesore, you know. Well, just to be on the safe side, maybe we ought to go on down there and take a look around. 
Uh, all right, Frank, but uh, not tonight. Uh, I'll have to look around and see if I still have a key. Uh, how about tomorrow morning? Suppose I pick you up around uh, 10 o'clock? Be fine. Sorry I disturbed you, George. No, no, not at all. Good night now. Good night, Frank. Yes, speaking. Well, I suggest you get busy on it right away. I really don't think there's any need for that gun, Frank. Well, I figured it was no use in uh, taking any chances, you know. Now, according to the kids, the... Cellar should be underneath this blanket. All right, let's take a look. Uh -huh. Well, they were right about that much anyway. I still think this whole thing's a bunch of poppycock. Yeah, it could be. Uh, I'm really sorry I had to drag you down here yeah. like this, George. Well? Yeah. This is what those kids were talking about. I'll certainly have a little something to say to them. Well, it might be a good idea to keep them away from here, Frank. But I wouldn't be too hard on them. After all, there's no harm done. Well, I just don't like being made a fool of. I'd like to speak to the Durden kids and to Wilbur Merkins, please. Anything wrong? You might say that. Scott? Tippy? Wilbur? I'll leave you alone. Thank you, Henry. Hi, Sheriff. Did you catch him? The only thing I caught was a headache brought on by three kids who keep poking their noses into places where they don't belong. Did you even see them? Wasn't a sign of anybody living in that shack for years. What about the stuff in the cellar? Junk? Wasn't worth a nickel? Well, we thought it might be worth something. All right, I am going to tell you three something right now. I want you to steer clear of posted land, or I am going to speak to your folks. We already told them. And what did they say? They said not to do anything that'll make you mad at us. I guess they didn't believe us either. All right, now you just remember what I said. You stay away from that place. I guess he's mad anyhow. You know, we started out to help Mr. Mead and forgot all about it. Just because of the men we see. Nobody believes we see them anyways. We gotta finish building the monster. We can go back right after school. Pull! Pull! Harder! Ow! Is that hard enough?
good, don't it? Yeah. Who are we going to get to come and see it? I don't know. But it's got to be somebody besides Mr. Mead. Or they still won't believe him. I know, Mrs. Pringle. Yeah. Only, how will y'all let him know about a monster? Can't tell him. I don't know. Hey, I know how we can do it. Come on. Come on, Tramp. Come on, boy. Uh, this is all ours. <laughs> If you want proof about the monster, come to Strawberry Cove tomorrow morning, your friend. I saw it again this morning. You mean your monster? That's right. Well, what's it look like? Well, it was sort of misty on the cove again. Uh -huh. But this time, I took pictures of it. And I've got those pictures right here in the camera. And I'm going to be able to describe it to you better when I get these pictures developed. And I can study them. I'm going to do that right now. Oh, now, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yes, yes. Well, the camera store doesn't open for another hour or so. <laughs> you know how Houston likes to sleep in, right? <laughs> yes, well, let's see. I, I'll run an errand. Then I'll go to my room and I'll wait till he opens, right? Yeah. Oh, Henry, yeah. I'd like to see those pictures after they're developed. All right. Then I suppose everybody in town would, huh? Well, they're going to get a chance to, because I'm going to take these pictures to the newspaper office and see if they can put them in tonight's edition. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks, Jim. Something. 
Let everybody know what we've done. I don't think we'd better do anything with it yet. Why? What if Mr. Mead and Miss Pringle never saw it? I mean, maybe they didn't come. Oh, yeah. We better find out. Maybe if we went to the town to... Hey, listen. It's a boat. Yeah, and it's all things getting closer. It's those same two men. Wonder where they're going this time. Probably to that old shed. How do you know? Because that's the only place the Turtle Creek goes. Think we ought to follow him? I don't know. Remember what Sheriff Wiley said? All he said was not to go on post and land. Yeah, let's go. as a baby in church. Nobody'd think of looking for the loot here in a million years. Boss say when it's supposed to be picked up? Yeah, he said something about a buyer coming in next week. You know something, Harry? I'm getting awful sick of these pastrami sandwiches. Give me a beer. Get out! I think I saw something moving. Stay here and keep Trout quiet. I'll go take a closer look. Boss say when he's going to get here? Well, he said for us to just sit tight. He had to finish up some business in town. See anything? They're eating. Eating sandwiches. Nothing suspicious about that. Did you hear that? What? Sounded like a growl. My stomach. Told you I'm getting sick of these pastrami sandwiches. I used the camera to take some pictures this morning down at the cove. Yeah, I heard something about that. Look, are you sure the camera was the only thing that was stolen? I didn't notice anything else because I didn't look around very much. Sure, we should have gotten a look at the man who hit you. Well, he hit me from behind. He was there waiting for me. I see. Well, if I hear anything, I'll let you know. Thank you. Tom wants you to take Henry down to see Doc Sims. No, it isn't necessary. I'm all right. Look, now we... Frank, now listen, I'm all right. hurt to have him shake you out. Come on. Excuse me. Yeah, move aside, please, folks. There you go, Mr. Mead. All right, now, I'd like all you people to leave. All right, now, the, the excitement's over. Go on home. That's it. On your way. Ah, uh, uh, you three. I want you kids to come down to the office with me. Why? Yeah, we didn't do anything. Folks, the excitement is all over. Would you go home now, please? Thank you. I want you to give me a description of the two men you were telling me you saw at Grogan's old shack. Oh, is that all? What was the other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold it, hold it. Let's wait till we get to the office. I can put it all down in the official report. Do you get to ride in the police car? Hop in. Will you turn on the fireman? That 
was catfish. And Scott and Tippy too. Bet you they was arrested. Yeah. Nobody ever gets to run jail for at least police car. That's arrested. And Tippy's going to jail. Guess I better take her some candy. Better find out what's visiting hours first. And he actually had the gall to say he photographed this monster. That's what he claims. Well, if you want to know what I think, I think he made up the entire story about being struck and having his camera stolen. But for what reason, Mrs. Pringle? To win sympathy for himself and try to make people believe that he is not suffering from hallucination. Well, I find that hard to believe. Regardless, I think you should know that some of us are prepared to draw up a petition asking for his resignation. Oh, I'm sure there are quite a number of parents whose children have been frightened by his outlandish story and who will be more than anxious to sign it. So that was the reason for the appointment, eh? Yes. Well, your petition won't be necessary, Mrs. Pringle. I'll call the school superintendent and ask for his recommendation on the matter. Thank you, Your Honor. Love the tea. Good day. Good day. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sheriff Wiley. Only thing, the film had been taken out. Oh. Well, what brings you three children here to school on a Saturday? Well? We heard you was leaving. That's true. But we don't want you to go. See, it so happens that I know the teacher who's going to replace me. And although it was some years ago, he used to be all-conference quarterback. I don't care if he was an all-American. Now, listen to me, all of you, and try to understand. When you have been teaching in one place as long as I am, it's sometimes a good idea to make a change. And I've already made application for teaching over at Haydenville. Please, Mr. Mead, we want you to stay here. Thank you, Tiffy. But it isn't as though we won't be seeing each other again. <laughs> After all, Haydenville isn't that far away. Mm. I just want to say goodbye. Yeah, going to school with you was almost fun. We'll be missing you, Mr. Mead. I'll be missing you, too. Why don't you run along? I have some work to do. Goodbye, Mr. Me. Ah. Uh. Joe? Uh, maybe extra scoop of ice cream make your kids feel better. Thanks, Mr. Helper. Catfish, I know how much you like chocolate syrup, so I gave you a double helping. I 
I know how you feel about Mr. Meade leaving. I feel the same way you do about it. It's all our fault. If we hadn't built up the monster, maybe Mr. Meade wouldn't be leaving. Yeah, if we could get somebody else to see it. Miss Pringle didn't even come after we wrote the letter. I don't like her. Me neither. Hey, what if you try somebody else size Mrs. Pringle? Then maybe Mr. Meade wouldn't have to leave. But we gotta do it before he goes. Let's do it tonight. We're gonna get to see it. I know who people would believe. Sheriff Wiley. Does it gotta be him? What if he catches us? Yeah, how are we gonna let him know about it? We could telephone him. He'd recognize our voice. Yeah. I know how he won't. Come on, hurry up and finish. <laughs> I told you. Sheriff Whitey, this is a friend. Come to Strawberry Cove tonight if you want to see the monster. <laughs> Anything, Tom? Yeah. I had to give old Gus Cranmer another ticket. Parked his truck next to a fire plug again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, what about the fellow who found Henry Meade's camera? Yeah, I, I checked out his story. Everything seems okay. He was just making a delivery. He saw the camera in a garbage can, and he heard that Henry had been robbed, so he brought it right over. Did you find the film? No trace. I've looked at every roll of film in the county. Four drugstores and both camera shops. I have never seen so many dogs, kids, and birthday parties in my life. Of course, he, I suppose he could have developed it himself. Yeah. You know, I can't understand why anybody's going to so much trouble just to see what Henry shot. Yeah, it does seem strange that anybody wants... Oh. Sheriff Wiley speaking. Sheriff Wiley. Just a minute, who, who is this? Who, who? Well, what was that all about? There might be a wild goose chase, but uh, so many funny things going on around here lately, I'm going to check that out. <laughs> yeah. Oh. As soon as I return a couple of these calls, you and I are going down to the cove and have a little look around. Think it'll work? I hope so. If it doesn't, Mr. Mead will have to leave for sure. Hey, look it! Yes, yeah, those same two men! What do 
you say, Harry? Well, he had a lot of things to say, but the most important was the fishing boat is coming in tonight. Did he say we're supposed to meet him? At a pier at the old shrimp cannery near Harper's Point. Did he say what time? Yeah, 8 o'clock. <laughs> oh, the last thing the boss said was to be sure to be on time. <laughs> you ain't got nothing to worry about. Not for no hundred grand, he ain't. <laughs> We gotta go tell Sheriff Wiley. Come on. children off to in such a hurry? Uh, we're going to the cove. Cove? Yeah, we thought we might see your monster. Then you still believe there is a monster? Yeah, because we built. Uh, come on, catfish, we better get going. Bye, Mr. Mead. Oh, dear, dear, dear. eye on that cove. Just fire your gun twice, see anything looks suspicious. sent me. I was... Uh, I, I heard there were a few stills around here someplace. I, and then there's the fire, danger, you know, the weenie roast, teenagers, stuff like... Fire danger. Well, I mean, the, the, the marsh grass. That gets pretty dry in, in the summertime. 
Let's take him back to the old cabin. What are you going to do? Why don't we just surprise you? Move. Go on. Go on, go on. Hey, wait! The sheriff just has to be here somewhere. Well, what if we can't find him? Yeah. Then we got to think of some kind of plan. Hey, I know. If we done something to those crooks' boat, then they couldn't leave. Yeah, that's a good idea. But what? Mm. I don't know. But we'll have to make it look like an accident. Yeah, I wouldn't want those crooks after me. Then think of something. How can I think if you keep on talking? We haven't got much time. We'll have to figure it out on the way. Come on. Scott! Take a look. Should we go with you? No, you better stay in case somebody comes. Good idea. snooping around for? I don't know, but he sure ain't gonna bother us tonight. Well, I'll tell you this, the boss ain't gonna like it. Get it started. Okay. By itself. We got one hour to meet the fishing boat and pick up the stuff. Yeah, I know. We gotta get the engine pack. Well, how are we gonna do it? Well, maybe I can hook it with this. Oh, Harry, that ain't gonna work. You got a better idea, genius? I think I got it hooked. Give me a hand. straight to the cops. Let's get him. Hey, boy. Hey, son. Don't run. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute.
You do it, Johnny. Hey, take that, my dad. Who tied you up like this? Take that, yeah, yeah. What? Hey, John! Take this candle. Oh, oh, thank you, Henry. Am I, am I glad to see you? What on earth happened? We've had a gang move in here at Calliope Bay. Woods is crawling with them. What kind of a gang? Well, as near as I can figure, Henry, would you untie me? As nearly as I can figure, could be uh, some kind of smugglers. Well, right now, I'm going to try to find my deputy and see if we can catch up to them. Did you by any chance see the dirt and children uh, here or, or young Merkins tonight? No, and I'd better not see them. Because I warned those kids against hanging around down here. Well, I'm afraid they are here. Oh, well, if that don't beat all. Not only have a gang of smugglers on my hands, but now I have to watch out for kids who have no business being here in the first place. Do you mind if I go with you? Oh, no, that would not be a good idea, Henry. Now, those guys mean business. Could be pretty dangerous out there. But I'm very concerned about the children. Now, maybe I could help some way. Well, all right, Henry, but stay close to me. Likely those guys are killers, you know. Well, it appears they took my gun. Well, I always, I always carry a shotgun in the car. We'll just stop, stop by and pick it up. You see them? Ah, uh, but I know they were headed this way. We better find them unless you want us to end up in a cell. Let's stay out of one of those. They gotta be around here someplace. Yeah. Go on. that one of them there, whatchamacallit's, a, a sea monster? What are you, a nut? That had to come out of a carnival or something. Hey, wait a minute. That's got to have an engine on it, don't it? Yeah. And we got to go out there and meet that fishing boat somehow. Come on. Yeah. Check it and see where the engine is. OK. what's hiding in there. Them kids. Get in there. Well, you kids been a lot of trouble. Us? Who do you think I'm talking to? Uh, I think I'll be going. Just remember, I got another violin lesson. You ain't going nowhere. None of you. Now come on out of there. What are you going to do with us? We're going to use this here rig for a little trip we got to make. Yeah, so you can go meet that fishing boat. I mean... For a little kid, you got a big mouth. Now, come on, get out of there, move. We ain't got all night. All right, come on out of there. Come on. Come on. Get over there. Stand right there. If that mutt tries that again, I'm gonna fix him good. Tramp didn't mean it honest. He was just playing. Okay. What are we gonna do with these kids, Harry? Take them with us? And face a kidnapping charge? You crazy or something? <sighs> kind of fond of that dog, ain't you, kid? Tramp? I read him ever since he was a pup. Well, he's gonna take a little ride with us. Put him in there. Get in there. You heard me. Go on, boy. It's all right. Now, listen. You kids go shooting off your mouths, and that dog's going to go for a swim with a rock around his neck. Get in there and get it started. You want to see that dog again, then you do just what I told you. Undo that line. Hey, Harry. 
There ain't no engine in this boat. All it's got is pedals. We'll start pedaling. Sure hope Trent remembers how to swim. Hey, quit moving around, will you? You want to tip us over? I'm only trying to see where I'm going. Hey, Harry, you know something? What? Why doesn't the ship see this thing coming? How do we know they won't start shooting at us? Well, we don't know. We take our chances. Just keep pedaling. Hey, dumbhead, watch where you're going. You want to steer this thing? No. Shouldn't you get some help? No, I can handle it, Henry. Now, just don't panic. Main thing is, don't panic. What? Shh, stay close behind me, Henry. Hands up, you. Sorry, Deputy, it was dark. I couldn't really hold it. Ah. I wish you wouldn't do that, Henry. That's Tram. That's Tram barking. The children must be there. Well, we better go find them. Then you can take them back to town before the, the shooting starts. Come on, get away, get away, go on. Dumbhead, straighten out your handles. We're getting no place. We're just going around in circles. I can't, Harry. This dog's chewing on my leg. And he ain't very friendly. Did you have to drive right into these lousy bushes? Steering this thing ain't that easy, Harry. Well, turn around. Do something. Well, how about if we try pedaling backwards? I don't care. Try anything. We've got to get out there and meet the boat. Speed, we're making it's going to be midnight before we meet the boat. Harry, I'm pedaling as fast as I can pedal. <laughs> My feet are getting wet. What are you talking about? I think we sprung a leak. That's what I'm talking about. I think we're sinking. You think we're sinking? All right, we are sinking. Look, there they are. Let's get out of this thing. Yeah, looks like it's sinking. Harry, I ain't exactly well, know how to learn it and fast. Remember that cork I put in the hole? Yeah, well, just before we left, I pulled it out. That sure was a good idea. Yeah, it sure was. Look, there's Tramp. Come on, Tramp. Come on, boy. Just hold it down. I'll take care of this. Hey. Yeah? I'm sorry. All right, you two, stop right where you are. And don't try any monkey shines. Put your hands on top of your heads. You kids stay back there with Henry. You are both under arrest. What for? Swimming with our clothes on? For, uh, s smuggling. You got any proof? Well, we know you took some some boxes from Grog and Shack and you hit him someplace. And then you tried to fool me by replacing it with junk. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you, Tiny? Ah, we don't know nothing. So unless you find that stuff you're talking about, you don't have any evidence against us. Oh, we'll find it, all right. Hey, I know. Bitch, I know they're hiding it. Yeah, up by Turtle Creek. We followed them up there one day. Uh-huh. 
Now I think I can figure it out. You think you kids could take me up there? Sure, we've been there hundreds of times. All right, take these two to town, lock them up. Hey, Sheriff, we heard them talking before. They said they was going out to meet a fishing boat. Something about another shipment doing tonight. Did you hear where they were supposed to meet this boat? At the old cannery near Harper's Point. When you get to town, call the Coast Guard, have them send a patrol boat right out there. Right. I saw the car parked not too far from here. I'll take them back to town in that. All right, you two, let's go. So, that's my monster. I think you three have some explaining to do. Oh, I'm afraid we don't have time for that, Henry. We, we, we've got to go get that evidence. <clears throat> This is where we saw it. All right, everybody, spread out and start looking. If you see any boxes, any crates, anything that looks like evidence, just yell out, all right? Come on, scatter. Come on, Jeff. this gives us all the evidence we need. Yes, it sort of wraps things up. What about the boss? Who? When we were hiding in Mr. Gargan's shack, we heard those two men talking to another man. Yeah, they called him boss. You mean there's somebody else mixed up in this? Why didn't you tell me there was another man? Because you didn't believe us in the first place. Well, I... Uh, duly elected... Law officer has to have some evidence. Can't just go around accusing people. All right, now, who who is this other man? We don't know. We didn't really see him. Yeah, he was holding a light in front of his face. Just a minute, Frank. Maybe this should have occurred to me before. What? What's that, Henry? Well, that morning that I photographed the monster, I stopped by John Halper's mall shop to tell him about it. And there must have been a half a dozen people there who heard me. And one of these people hit you over the head and took your camera? Yes, and whoever it was must be this, this boss. Do you remember who these people were? No, I was too excited. Perhaps John remembers. Maybe so. Let's go talk to him. Yes. Come on, kids. Everybody out. I'll stop here because that's John's car up there. Must be working late. Guess maybe he's in there doing a little book work. Yeah, I think I see a nightlight. Trusted those two idiots. I saw them down at the cove. I was watching. I suppose they told you everything, huh? As a matter of fact, they didn't say anything. Seems as, as if they don't have to now. I don't understand. Oh, it's quite simple. I planned this whole setup very carefully before moving here and opening this shop. Your innocent little town being so close to the Gulf made things very easy to smuggle things in from Mexico. Things were going very smoothly, too. So these kids got the crazy idea of building a monster to save your job. Now I do understand. Get him up! 
You didn't want people coming here and flocking down to the cove to see my monster. Not if there was a risk of someone finding out what you were up to. You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Mr. Helper. Yeah, I'm never going to buy any malts from you anymore. I don't care how much chocolate you put in them. All right, that's enough talk. Get moving, come on. What are you going to do with us? Well, we're just going to keep you locked in the back here until I get out. All except you, Sheriff. I'll be taking you along with me. You'll never get away with this. My deputy be on the phone. He'll have half the state police force after us before you can shake a stick. Oh, I don't think they'll give us any trouble. Not as long as I've got you as my hostage. All right, the rest of you. Get in the back. Come on. Stay right where you are. That was quick thinking, Henry. Look, I'll handle it from here on in. You. Out. Outside. Oh. Gee, Mr. Mead, you were great. I'm just glad I didn't have time to think about what I was doing. And we build it, somebody else will see it too. Then people have to believe Mr. Mead. Then maybe Mr. Mead wouldn't have to leave Caliu Bay. Well, I hope he won't be leaving us. No, I expect that's for me. Uh, can we count on seeing you at school on Monday, Henry? Oh, yes, sir. Where else would I go to teach and find children with such imaginations who are such loyal friends? That was my deputy. Coast Guard picked up that fishing boat, found a whole parcel of art objects stolen from a Mexican museum. Guess I better get back to the off. I suppose I should thank you kids, even though you didn't do exactly like I asked you. But then I guess we wouldn't have caught up with the smugglers if they had minded me. <laughs> yeah, Frank, can you give me a lift? Why not? Henry, I'd like to thank you children, too. But especially, I'd like to thank you for having the courage to uphold your faith in Mr. Mead. Good night. Good night. Uh, been a long day. See you in school, Mr. Mead. All right, Tippy. And now, Wilbur, just because of your adventures tonight doesn't mean that you are excused from doing your homework. I'd still like to read your views on Moby Dick. Yes, sir. Good night. Oh, we've got to ask about the reward. We can ask about it tomorrow. Now I think it's about time your children were off to bed. I talked to your parents, Wilbur. They said it was all right for you to spend the night. Oh, boy, now we can talk how we're going to spend the money. Yeah. No more talking tonight. Ten minutes until lights out. Come on. Off you go. Good night. Good night, kids. <laughs> And we're all very, very proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, may I call you Henry? No, you may not. Uh, I thought you might like to know that the members of the Greater Caliu Bay Bird Watcher Society has unanimously voted you an honorary membership. I'm afraid I wouldn't be interested. But surely you must be interested in learning to know some of our indigenous birds. Well, I already know one indigenous bird, Mrs. Pringle. Good night, ma'am. Uh...